All right, so now that we've talked about and kind of broken down the surface properties, where they're located and how you apply them, let's actually see it in practice here. Now I've got this file of these rings that I created earlier in the course, very similar to the rings that I'd created for this background graphic that you see right here. And I'm just gonna do kind of the same thing of applying a carbon fiber uh, texture to them to create some really interesting carbon fiber rings. Now to go ahead and get started doing this, we of course need to have our texture. Now I've got a texture here that I actually found on iStock Photo. It's a simple carbon fiber texture. What's cool about this one though is that it, it's, it came seamless. Meaning if I go and do it as a tile, if I tile it as a pattern, it's not going to look like, you know, it's out of sync. It's actually going to line up because it is a seamless pattern. And if you just want to test it, you can actually go under the filter menu to offset and increase the left and right horizontal. And if you don't see an obvious line, that means it's a seamless pattern and it's going to continue to repeat no matter what you do. So you can actually search seamless patterns in iStock Photo for these types of things and, uh, and you'll actually return uh, quite a few results and that's how I uh, obtained this one. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do a select all, command or control A, and then just copy this to the clipboard. Let's go under edit and go choose copy and we'll just minimize this image. And we'll back in our 3D layer here. I'm just going to go ahead and select one of the 3D objects here. And obviously because we extruded it and wrapped it around itself, basically revolved it, then it would, uh, what we're seeing here is actually the extruded side of the uh, of the object. So I'm going to go ahead and choose layer 2 extrusion material. And I'm going to go into the def the properties panel here and with the layer 2 extrusion material selected, we've got all the various properties here. I'm going to go up to the diffuse setting and just click on that little folder icon and choose new texture. Now it's going to remember the size of the document I have in my clipboard which I copied that carbon fiber clipboard or image to my clipboard, it remembers that and creates the new document based on those dimensions. Now all it does is create that file. You have to go back into that same menu and choose edit texture to, to modify that texture file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press command V. It's gonna paste that texture in there. I'm gonna close it and save the changes and there you can see it wraps it around my object. Now you can see it's kind of stretching this object around and I need to modify its position on the 3D object. Well, the first thing I want to do is actually go back and select the layer two main item here. We've got the uh, twirl down and select the, the uh, main object uh, line item here. And in the properties panel, you've got all these different properties. What I want to change is this one here where it says texture mapping. Right now it's set to scale. So it's going to scale the object or the texture file to fit the object in its best, the best possible way. But the problem with that is it distorts the texture. So I'm going to go over here and change this to tile. And because this is a seamless texture, it's, it should fit a little better and look a little less stretched. See, there you go. Now it looks pretty good. Now what if you wanted to modify it further than that? Maybe I want the carbon uh, fiber texture to be a little bit smaller. Well, I'm going to go back and select that layer 2 extrusion material and go back into that same diffuse setting and go down here in this pop-up menu again. But this time I'm going to choose Edit UV Properties. And here you can actually change the UV scale and offset, meaning you can actually scale the texture that's on the 3D object. You're not scaling the 3D object, you're just scaling the texture that's been applied to it. You can offset it as well. Now in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the slider and push this up and you can see in real time the result as I do this. As I increase the numbers, the texture gets smaller. If I wanted to stretch it, I can make that into the negative and get something like that. But I'm just, again, increasing this quite a bit to make that carbon fiber texture a little bit smaller, and I'll click OK. So I can modify and manage that texture even after it's been applied to my 3D object. So again, let's go do the same thing to the other ring. It's grouped in here, so I'm going to go again, use Layer 2 Extrusion Material, go to the Diffuse Texture, create a new texture. It's still in the clipboard, so it's going to remember that uh, the size of that document, so click OK. Once again, back in there, choose Edit Texture, Command or Control V, or just simply go into the Edit menu and choose Paste. And we'll go ahead and choose, close that, save the changes. There's the texture on the other ring. Let's go and fix that mapping. We'll change it to Tile once again. And back on the Extrusion Material, let's go and edit the UV properties and bring that scaling up a little bit. And there we have our texture applied to our object. So let's go and grab our current camera view and just kind of move this around and see what's going on here. So we've got some pretty interesting things happening here. They're not just boring gray filled rings. Now they have texture to them. They're starting to have a little bit of life to it. Let's kind of zoom in here. 
and uh, kind of get a good idea what's going on. Now, when you create 3D objects, it does in fact apply a default light to your object. If I go in here in my light section, you can see I've got an infinite light applied to this. Now we're going to talk about lights a lot more in depth in the next video or in the next couple videos in just a moment. But just want to kind of touch on this because I want to show you how you can modify the surface properties of your object. Now, let's go back and jump over to our 3D main list here. And we've got these two main 3D objects with the um, textures applied. I'm going to go back to that layer 2 extrusion material and bump up the reflection. In fact, I'm going to go all the way up to 100% on this. Well, maybe not quite. Let's do like 75. And the same thing with the layer extrusion material on the other shape as well. Let's go ahead and make that reflection 75. Now, the reason we don't see the reflection right away because the reflection is still something you have to kind of do a render for. So I'm going to, again, hold, hold down Shift, Option, Command on the Mac. That would be Shift, Alt, Control on Windows, and then press R, and that's going to do a quick render. And you can see it's already starting to reflect around in there, giving me some interesting results on my object. Now, again, I said I'm going to talk about lights more in depth in a little, in a little while, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new point light to this scene. So it makes the scene a little bit brighter. And let's actually take this and push it in a little bit. So it kind of illuminates that area there. So we've got the, kind of a light sitting right here in the middle. I'm going to go back to that 3D panel and reselect that layer extrusion material. I'm going to increase the shine. And notice what happens to the surface as I increase the shine property here. That little hot spot gets a little bit hotter. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other shape here. I'm going to bump up that shine. It's going to tighten up the shine on that object quite a bit more. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go back to the lights and let's increase the intensity of that light a little bit. Here we go. So I'm getting a really cool shine on there just by modifying those lights. So it's just, and just a couple of properties. We've modified the layer two extrusion, which is the only surface we see. We added a texture to it, and then we incre increased the shine, added a reflection, and it's reflecting off each other and all that. I'm not going to add an environment to this because that would just be too chaotic with the way the carbon fiber is now. Reflecting an environment would just make it really crazy, and there'd be way too much going on. But you can really get a good idea of what you can do with simple textures and surface properties. Now, as I said, we're going to get into lights much more depth in the next video. But hopefully this gives you a really good idea of what you can do. And uh, notice, I'm going to go ahead and move my current view here, move this around. I'm noticing things, and I actually feel it. Things are looking, moving a little bit slower when I move things around because there's a lot more processing going on here. It's more than just a simple shape. Now it's got texture. It's actually got an image file applied to it along with other lighting things and other surface properties that add to the processing. And this is a, this is a lot of imaging to, processing go, to process going on here. So you're going to start to notice a little bit of lag in it. But fortunately, it's on the tail end of your project. After you do this, you really kind of just modify the lighting and then start doing your rendering and all your little tweaking. And then you're uh, getting close to being done. So let's go into the next lesson and talk a little bit about lighting and the various lightings you, lights you can apply and how you can modify them and make them work for you. However, before I do that, let's do a quick render here and uh, get an idea of what we've got going on here after those minor changes I just made. Again, Shift, Option, Command, R, and let's go ahead and run it through here. And you can see it's you know, generating those reflections and everything's looking pretty good. I do a little bit more tweaking, but you can kind of see, based on what I've done here up to this point, how I was able to get to this image here. Now, obviously, I added a few more elements going on here with uh, some depth of field and the lighting and everything like that. But that's just taking it to that next level. But getting there is as simple as doing this, creating the shapes, applying the textures, then modifying the surface properties to get something that looks that much more realistic. And this is uh, kind of where people kind of get stuck sometimes. They'll get to a certain point with 3D and have very basic shapes. But being able to take it to that next level to give you that re that realism that you were never able to achieve before in Photoshop is really, really big deal in here and something I certainly encourage you to experiment with more of and uh, going to have a lot more uh, training and tutorials on that uh, in the coming months as well. So let's go in and talk about the last thing, which is the lighting, and then we'll get into more rendering and everything like that and finishing off our project. And then we're going to culminate all of this into one quick project we're going to put together at the end here.